Hey guys, Bluff Monkey back again with Sonic Academy and in today's video I want to have another little chat about psychology. Um, so a few months ago I did a video entitled The Psychology of Making Music and it seemed to go down rather well. A lot of you seem to like what I had to say. Um, but I was talking to Chris about doing a follow-up of this video and it occurred to me that you guys are here to learn and then I was, I was thinking to myself, well, learning can actually be quite tricky in itself these days for a number of reasons. And that's what I want to go through in this video. So let's get stuck straight into it. As usual, I've made notes. And the first thing I want to touch on briefly, um, we don't need to talk a lot about this. Um, but it's this idea of learning one thing at a time, especially at the beginning, especially when you're starting out and even even a little bit further on down the road, because one thing that it took me a long time to grasp um, was this idea that what I knew on paper didn't always translate to what I could perceive or what I could hear when making music. And this comes back to this phrase I use a lot called muscle memory. And your ears do have a kind of muscle memory. So if you're trying to consume all of this information about mixing a track or making a track, it can, it can often be overwhelming. Even if you understand the technicalities of it in theory, it doesn't necessarily mean that you can achieve the same results. Um, an example of that would be you know, you can read as much as you like about driving a car. You can learn what an accelerator, brake and a clutch do. But your feet and your legs don't have the muscle memory to be able to do a hill start. So it doesn't matter how many times you read, put a little bit of gas on, take the handbrake off slowly, lift the clutch up and do it all at the same time so that you move up the hill without going backwards. It doesn't matter how many times you read about doing that. The first time you get in a car and try it, you're going to stall or you're going to go backwards. And that's down to muscle memory. And it is the same thing with mixing. You know, you, you can read about how to EQ a kick or how to mix certain elements of a track together. But until your ears get used to hearing these things and that, until your brain figures out what it's trying to listen to, it won't necessarily make a huge amount of sense. And this is why I say learn one thing at a time. So a couple of examples of this would be um, you are EQing a lead, you decide that the lead wants a little bit of a boost around 3k for example. Then you apply a compressor to it. You, you don't really know why you're doing it yet, but the compressor is going to be looking for the loudest parts of this sound and if you've boosted it slightly, your compression is going to attenuate or, or reduce that little boost you've done slightly. So you could be forever chasing your tail, boosting a bit of EQ and then having to adjust the compressor again, boosting the EQ, having to adjust the in compressor. So it's actually a much better idea to, to figure out one of these things at a time. And then later on, maybe try and get your ears used to what happens when you apply them both together at the same time. And speaking of kicks, another, another example would be, um, you know, you've been making music for three or four months and you've decided you want to start learning how to make your own kicks, layering kicks together. Now, there's nothing wrong with that, but until you know, maybe by using 50 or 60 samples in a track, maybe you've done 20 or 30 tracks and you figured out exactly what it is you want to hear from a kick in the first place, trying to then make one of your own might be a futile exercise. On the other hand, you're going to learn things in the process of doing it anyway, but I think it's far better to to focus on these one thing at a time, one things at a time, one thing at a time, um, because it gives your your brain and your ears a chance to really become accustomed to that sound and why it works for you. So that's it. Rule number one or suggestion number one: try and stick to learning things one thing at a time and just spending a bit of time with that one concept before you move on. read the frickin' manual. Okay. So I know I've seen this, this kind of comment time and time again, where somebody posts a tutorial of how to do something, doesn't matter where that tutorial is, and then somebody will come along and say, can you show me how to do that in a different door? So 
The reason I say read the manual is because first and foremost, it's your responsibility to learn the tools that you're using. You don't, it doesn't matter if you know why you use them there or, or, or how to apply them to different scenarios, but figure out the software that you're using and how it works and how it all goes together and what's included and what tools you have there by experimenting with several versions of absolute crap. That's fine. Make a load of crap. As long as you're using the tools first, get to know those tools before you start um, exploring alternative ways of doing things because you'll learn a lot by just exploring on your own. Even if the results are bad, you will still be learning a lot. And we'll touch on this a little bit later on. But if somebody um, shows you how to mix some vocals into a house track in Ableton Live, unless they're using tools that are absolutely specific to live, which for the most part they won't be, then you can transfer those techniques to any other platform, any other door, any other software. Um, you know, the way you EQ in Ableton Live is not gonna be different to the way you EQ in FL Studio or Logic or whatever it is you use. And on top of this, if you see somebody, uh, I don't know, mixing a kick drum in Logic and them using a certain kind of EQ, a certain specific way of EQing, a certain specific way of compression, I can almost guarantee you that 99% of the time you'll be able to do exactly the same thing in the door that you're using too. They all have pretty much exactly the same tools for the most part. Um, there are exceptions of course, like Ableton Live Session View doesn't appear in most other doors, but that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about basic mixing tools and techniques here. So. If you do see a tutorial in software that isn't the same as the software you're using, there is a huge amount of value in taking what you see and figuring out how to do it in the software that you're using without being spoon fed. Figuring out how to do it by yourself, and <clears throat> most of the time you will be able to do it in the software that you're using, is invaluable to the learning process. And also, so is finding out that you can't do it in the software that you're using because when you realize why you can't do it, you will have learned something about that software and about the software in the tutorial that you're watching. Um, and again, we're gonna to touch on this a bit later, but you learn more by doing things than by watching things. So don't get stuck in the idea that you can only watch tutorials in the software that you're using is the point I'm trying to make. So, that last point I made leads nicely on to what we're gonna talk about now, which is learning by doing things, not by watching things. <clears throat> and to quote a wise man. I'll tell you the problem with the scientific power that you're, that you're using here. Uh, it didn't require any discipline to attain it. You know, you read what others had done and you, and you took the next step. You didn't earn the knowledge for yourselves, so you don't take any responsibility. So what does he mean by this? Well, I think the point I was trying to make before is that it's it's very easy to read, consume information without necessarily having it fire the right neurons in your brain to store it as knowledge um, or, or to store it as skill, not knowledge, because you, you'd have the knowledge, but what we're trying to do is promote skill, a skill set, not a... a, a a kind of vault of information. And I think sometimes <clears throat> intelligence is confused with knowledge. Somebody that knows a lot of things isn't necessarily intelligent, they just know a lot of things. Applying the things that you know is probably more akin to describing intelligence, I would argue. So when you, when you look at a tutorial or you read some information about how to do a specific thing, it's very important to then apply that to, to practice. So instead of spending three or four hours watching lots and lots of content, it's, it's much better to watch something for 10 or 15 minutes, have a think about what it is that they're doing, and then recreate it in your own style. And it's by doing these things that then starts making the connections in your brain. You don't necessarily make connections in your brain 
by just reading or consuming information and consuming content. Uh, really, your brain looks at those as suggestions or concepts. And it's really by doing things, by m physically moving and actually trying to do these things, that it will take those concepts and convert them into skills or long-term knowledge. So um, I, I think on top of that, get if, if you're watching a, a tutorial and somebody's got um, like Ableton Live, for example. Hello. Um, you can create very complicated signal chains with the effects rack. Um, and somebody may be showing you an effects rack that they've created and how it impacts the sound that they're trying to make. And you might think, okay, well, I need that effects rack too. But yes, it might help in one or two situations, but it's far more valuable for you to know why they're doing it, not how they're doing it. Knowing how somebody does something is not as important as knowing why they're doing it. And I think this is missing from... Um, I don't know if I want to say this because it sounds like I'm dissing other people's information. But a lot of the time, a tutorial will show you, this is how I do this, X, Y, Z. I do X, Y, Z, and then I get A, B, C. Um, and that's fine, that's fine. As long as you take that X, Y, Z, A, B, C, and you apply it to something you're doing, and in the process, you figure out why it's working. But I think it's much better for a tutorial to say, I do this because A, B, C. When you have the because in there, it's much more, much more likely that your brain is gonna go, oh, right, okay, yeah, I understand that now, if that makes sense. Um, so yeah, don't get too caught up in the specifics of the, um, the information that's being beamed into your brain. It's, uh, it's much better to apply it as, as your own practice, as your own physical movement, as, as your own, you know, things that you're hearing and reactions that you're taking. Okay, I can hear this, I'm gonna do this in response. Um, much better than just kind of sitting back mouth wide open oh, okay because that that really won't go in as well trust me so again this this last point i made um when it comes to consuming content now i have a very strong belief that consuming content is addictive there is so much of it out there and we're gonna I think next I'm going to touch on the kind of content there is out there as well. Um, there is so much of it out there. It's very easy to just watch one video. Okay, I'll just watch another video. I'll tell you what, I'm going to watch another video. Um, and that in itself is has become the pastime. Your pastime is no longer learning how to make music or actually making music, in fact. The pastime has become watching videos about making music. Um, and I've, I've got into this habit myself and I'll tell you something I do when I'm, when I'm building a new course, when I'm researching a new course, um, most of the time I, I have a pretty good idea of what I'm going to say and what I want to portray in, in the video before I even start making notes. And I always make these notes, but I need to double check myself as much as possible to make sure that the information I'm providing is as accurate as it can possibly be. Now, within the realms that a lot of making music is, is personal choice and it's a creative process, therefore there isn't always a right or wrong. But if I'm stating a fact about something, I'd like to make sure that as much as possible, that fact is accurate. Uh, what was the point I'm trying to make? Oh yeah. So in the process of doing that, I will often watch um, similar styles of content about similar styles of subject matter um, to try and get a better idea of what I what it is that I want to do. And everybody does this. It's the same as if you're making a certain kind of track, you'll listen to similar kinds of tracks. You, you'll have reference tracks. So in effect, I'm, I'm watching reference videos. Okay, what, what is it that I want to say that this guy isn't saying? And that's something I try to do. But in the process of researching these things, I'll often find myself leaning further and further back. My feet get higher and higher up on the desk and I'm just clicking one video after the other. And all of a sudden, I'm watching a video about a man fry eggs in his car and it's just like, how the frick did I get here? Um, and I think this is something that 
you need to, to pay attention to. And assuming you, like me, have a finite amount of time to spend on this, um, it's you need to view YouTube, etc. This content consumption really can be classed as entertainment more than education sometimes. So I would try and limit the, the volume of content you consume in one sitting and then try and transfer that to actual practice as quickly as possible. Now, if you want to have a three hour session of watching people rescue horses out of ditches, that's fine. But you don't need to apply that knowledge anywhere else. You know that's in um, entertainment, right? You, you know that all you're doing is pandering to your requirement to consume entertainment. But I think because YouTube is, isn't, it, it's, not, it's not an educational platform, it's very easy to slip into that kind of relaxed mouth open. Click. Ah, click. And there's a kind of, for me anyway, there's a kind of vegetative state that I get into, get into when watching YouTube sometimes that isn't really conducive to my brain taking information in because it's almost like this um, stimulus response thing. As I'm watching a video, I'm looking for the next one to watch. So how can I be paying attention? That kind of thing. I'm sure this is familiar to you guys too. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Just try and keep a rein on the kind of consumption of this information. Okay. Continuing the subject of YouTube. I would like to, I mean, this is going to be kind of controversial. I had to talk to Chris about how, how I relay this information. Um, but what I'm talking about is this. Mother. So there is a propensity amongst the YouTube fraternity to be clickbaity. And this is something we need to avoid as much as possible. Now, I, I want to say this for a start. There is some incredible, incredible uh, information out there on YouTube. But <clears throat> it's, it's often the case that you have to wade through a sea of dog shit to find it. Okay? I've said it. There is so much crap out there. And I've come to the conclusion that the problem is one of accountability. And what I mean by that is that if you have a YouTube channel, there is nobody telling you that your information has to be true, with the exception of obviously false and dangerous information. If you're talking about making music, you don't have to be accurate. You don't even have to be good at what you're doing. And nobody is there to tell you what to say or how to say it. Now, on the one hand, Okay, that's great. It's not censored. But on the other hand, you know, if you're in a situation where you are learning something, um, you don't necessarily know whether the information you're getting is correct or not. And I'll give you an example of that. I'm not going to give you an example of an audio channel because I, 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 um, I see stuff all the time and I'm thinking, oh, no, that's not, that's not true. But I was watching um, somebody talk about morning routines the other day. Because at my age, I'm, I'm fat and middle-aged. Um, I've started to take my health a little bit more seriously. So I'm watching all these things, trying to figure out how it is I want to become healthier. And this woman was talking about morning routines. And she said, what you should never do in the morning is pick up your phone and start looking at it straight away. And then she started talking about how your phone is brighter than the sun and she started qu quoting Kelvin as a measurement of brightness. Now the problem is that Kelvin isn't a measurement of brightness, it's a measurement of colour temperature and the idea that your phone is brighter than the sun is just absurd. So the point she was trying to make is actually true, don't pick up your phone and start doing this the second you wake up. Yes she's right, but she's right for the, for the wrong reasons. And I think this is 
this is one of the issues with YouTube is that there's it's all it almost works like Chinese whispers you get this constant regurgitation of ideas and information and remember what I was talking about knowing why you do something not how you do something so she's relaying information that she's obviously heard somewhere else but she doesn't know why this information is relevant um, and it's the why that is often the most important information when you're learning something um, because when you know why something is the way it is that knowledge can apply to lots of different things it can transfer to lots of different things if you just learn the process of doing something without knowing why you're doing it you're stuck in that one situational scenario for this process if you know why that process is working you can apply that process to many different other things and that's the point i'm trying to make and this is where i think a lot of content can fall down and it's this issue of accountability on YouTube is why you have to be careful about what you consume on there. But again, there's, there's some incredible, incredible information out there. I'm not dissing YouTube or anybody on it at all. But as, as a, a human being who's trying to learn something, I think you have to be selective and double check what you're hearing all the time. Um, uh, and it's different for any kind of paid platform like Sonic Academy. There are other paid platforms out there. This isn't a, this isn't about me promoting Sonic Academy. But if you're on a paid platform, you have accountability because if 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 you provide information that's incorrect, you're going to be absolutely hammered by it, and rightly so, because people people are paying you for your knowledge and for your expertise. And that's not the case on YouTube, and that's why you have to be a little bit careful with it. And then you also get a lot of the um, the clickbaity stuff, like five reasons why nobody's ever told you this and the secrets that they're not telling you. I'll tell you, there is no secret to making music. There's no secret to it, it's just practice. There isn't a cabal of musicians hiding uh, 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 this secret information in a vault somewhere. It, it's just not how it is. But that's what the YouTubers are trying to sell you. They're trying to sell you this idea that they know something that you don't know because another load of people are keeping a secret from you. And it's just bullshit. It's complete bullshit. The reason you don't know it is because you don't know it yet. That's it. There's nobody trying to hide information. There's probably a thousand more people waiting to give you the information than hiding it from you. Because they're all trying to get you to look, to look at their channel, right? If that makes sense. It doesn't make sense to keep the information from you when really all they're trying to do is build numbers. That's, that's what YouTube's about. Numbers. Click, 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 click. React, react, react. Click, click, click. So to keep secrets from you doesn't make any kind of sense, if that makes sense. Rant over, YouTube is fantastic, I love it. Right, last thing I wanna talk about is the time you spend not in this room. Now, you can consume some information, you can read something or watch a video and you can apply it to your music and you can have a revelation about it. And that's the point when you should walk away. <gasps> really? Yes, really. Because there's only so much that your brain will take in during the day. And the analogy I want to make is weightlifting. Now, when I was younger and more capable, I used to do quite a lot of weightlifting. And when I was much younger, when I was 21, I thought the more time I spent in the gym, the bigger I'd get. But that wasn't actually the case. So it takes a while for you, for the young mind to, to, to gain the wisdom that I was far better off going to the gym three days a week and then making sure that what I ate was on point and what, how much I rested was on point. Those, that, that food and rest is actually more important to my gains than the exercise itself. I didn't realize that when I was 21. Um, and it's kind of the same with learning this business of music because your brain just won't take in and won't store that much information in one go. And it's also, there's a truism in, in this idea that you learn far more when you're moving and doing things. Your brain wants to store information. When you're moving and when you're doing things, your brain will store more information. And when you're making music, you're not actually doing a lot of moving. It's this. Mm. Click, 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 click. So it's best, better to take it in 
better to learn it in small portions. <clears throat> And something I found, um, and again, I, I started using doors and mixing at a relatively late stage. I'd been making music for years. I was making music as a teenager um, and in my 20s. Um, but the mixing side of things, because of the way the music business worked then and because of who I was making music with, I was more of a creative guy than a mixing guy. And it wasn't really until I got into my very, very late 20s and early 30s when I started using software and actually having to learn how to mix music. And it's, it's quite tricky, it's quite tricky. But what I found was that I would, especially in my mid thirties, I would be making tracks and you, you've probably got this phenomenon where you, you spend a long time making a track and you listen to it the next day and it's utter shit. We've all done that, we've all been there. But that's because, you know, ear fatigue has set in. You think you're you're doing something great, but your ears your your ears have checked out by this point. You've got maybe, I mean for me, I've got maybe an hour's worth of mixing in my ears, and then I'm done. I know I have to walk away for at least half a day, at least. But what I discovered was where I used to live, I had this massive kind of park right next door to where I used to live. So I would render out whatever I was doing and i would put it on headphones and i'd just go for a walk and it was almost a subliminal thing i wasn't listening intently to the music i just tried to make but just walking and looking at trees and looking at the sky um gave me a different perspective on what i was listening to i wasn't focusing on the music but because of that things were jumping out at me i was walking along i was looking at a pigeon and then something in my brain was going you're kicky shit oh really i didn't notice when i was making the music um, and it's this movement. When you move your body, your your mind works in a very different way. Your perception works in a very different way. <clears throat> and really, that's the gist of this kind of um, <clears throat> suggestion here is the time you spend not making music can be just as valuable as the time you spend making it. And there is a serious law of diminishing returns. The more time you spend in the studio doesn't mean you're learning twice. You know, if you spend twice as long in the studio, you're not gonna learn twice as much. It just will not happen. And if I had to put a number on it, I would say anything between one and three hours a day is about the maximum you can really do anything vaguely productive in terms of building your skill set. Like you have to take breaks, you have to walk away from this room, you have to walk away from the desk and get outside and see the sky. I've said this before in other videos, especially the one about psychology of making music as well. Um, and if you're learning EQ, specifically I remember having a lot of these revelations about EQing. There is, you know, it's, it's quite an abstract concept you know why does your brain need to know what one and a half k sounds like well it doesn't but what you will realize is that when you're out and about and you hear this let's say one and a half k to three k when you hear these frequencies in your mix and you're out walking about all of a sudden eh, they'll sound like a baby crying or a cat screeching oh hang on so that 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 frequency area there is actually quite annoying and it sometimes takes a little bit of kind of mental unawareness to become aware of the thing you're trying to learn. Um, I hope that makes sense, what I'm trying to explain here. It's just looking at things from a different standpoint or hearing things from a different standpoint um, in a different environment on different speakers can be far more valuable to your learning process than trying to force the issue in the studio. So really that's all I wanted to go through today is just this idea that um, learning itself can be um, a skill that you can learn and improve on. Um, just by being selective about what it is that you consume, how you consume it, when you consume it, and most importantly, how much you apply it to actually doing something. I think more than anything else, it's taking yourself away from the process of having information going into your brain and using that information in the real world, in the real musical world. That's where you're gonna do all of your learning really, I think. 
So I hope you found my rants useful today and my monologue useful today, and I'll see you guys again soon. Thank you. Thanks everyone for watching. We really appreciate all the support from you guys. If you love this video, then smash a like. And if you want to be notified about new videos, hit the subscribe and notification buttons. Peace.